What's up everybody, Jason here. Today we're gonna take a look at the Sequential Pro 3 synthesizer and we'll do some patch design with the arpeggiator, the paraphonic mode, and the modulation sequencer, combining the three of them together to create some complex arpeggio patterns. Let's jump in here and do some patch design. Uh, so I'm not sure exactly where we'll head with this, but I know I wanna play around with the arpeggiator uh, with the mod sequencer and the paraphonic mode here. So let's start with a initialized patch. Bring this down an octave. All right, let's uh, dial up a sort of plucky type of sound here. All right, let's get the decay, bring down the sustain, and release. And I'm going to switch the, uh, in miscellaneous parameters, turn re-triggering on so that every note hit will uh, re-trigger the envelopes. on the uh, amplifier envelope here. So I'll bring the sustain all the way down on this one too. And I'm gonna put this in two pull mode so we get a little more of the upper harmonic frequencies in the pluck. Uh, so one of the things about the two pull mode is that even when you have the cutoff all the way down to zero, it still lets a little bit of the sound through. Uh, I'm not sure why they uh, designed it this way, but. Here, I'll turn the amount down so you can hear what I'm talking about here. So as you can hear there, you can still hear the sound coming through the filter, even though the cutoff's all the way turned down. Uh, so what you can do is go into the source for the modulation here and uh, select one of these empty mod slots and set it to DC as the source. That means direct current. And then we're going to set the destination to the cutoff. And I'm just going to set the amount here to negative 24. And what that's going to do is just uh, make it effectively so when this is at zero, it'll be fully closed. So there, you can't hear it now. Uh, so I, I usually do this for pluck sounds. I like to be able to have the pluck start uh, completely silent uh, and then come in with the filter. Okay, so that sounds okay for a pluck. Let me up resonance a little. Maybe get a little drive in there too. Okay, so that's sort of a basic uh, plucky type of sound. Um, let's go ahead and turn on the arpeggiator. Okay, so that's just pretty basic uh, arpeggiator, nothing special going on there. It's just using the up-down mode is what it's set in right now. Uh, with zero repeats. Uh, so instead of running the arpeggiator in the normal mode, in the uh, monophonic mode of, this, of the uh, Pro 3, we're gonna turn on paraphonic mode now. And uh, this is what it sounds like with paraphonic mode on. So what you're hearing there is, it's running through oscillator one, two, three. It's going one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three for each arpeggiator step. And right now we only have oscillator one on. These are both effectively set at zero volume. So we're just hearing oscillator one and then two blank steps, uh, but we're getting some envelope repeating going on. So let's go ahead and turn up the other oscillators and get them all in the same octave. Okay, so uh, now we've got all of them at about the same volume. They're all set to uh, sawtooths. Um, and basically we've got about the same sound as we had before we were in paraphonic mode now. A little 
different in the, it's the, uh, in the way the uh, envelopes are re-triggering. Um, but now what you can do in paraphonic mode, which is really cool, is you can have the oscillators have a, a different shape to them or put them in different octaves. So here we'll put uh, these two oscillators in the lower octave in minus two, keep this one in minus one. So this is pretty cool in that if you have one of the oscillators in a higher octave, um, right now I have this one two octaves up, you can hear that every third step the arpeggiator hits is two octaves up. There it is, now it's one octave up. So this is uh, running the arpeggiator in a similar uh, to how like the old Korg Monopoly could run the uh, arpeggiator where each oscillator consecutively gets uh, triggered in the arpeggiator. Um, so you can create some really cool, interesting sounds. You could change the shape on each oscillator if you wanted. So I can put this one, say, to a triangle, keep this one at a sawtooth, and maybe put this one at a pulse. That's a more extreme example of uh, really changing it up where you have every oscillator have a whole different shape to it. Um, I'll often put them all as somewhat similar, but maybe a little bit of different shape mod. So I'll put these both the sawtooths and I'll put this one back to a sawtooth. So that's uh, just running the arpeggiator with the paraphonic mode uh, to show off how you can get some really interesting arpeggiation uh, with just changing the, uh, the oscillator octaves or shape. Uh, now we're going to jump in and go a step further and integrate the modulation sequencer in addition to the arpeggiator. So um, here I'm going to turn on the modulation sequencer in trigger mode so that each uh, consecutive arpeggio step will trigger the next uh, step here. Let's go to track number five here, which currently is ratted to nothing. And let's just, if you hold down track select, we'll uh, turn this octave button to route it to oscillator one octave. Uh, and then I'm actually gonna turn this and switch it to oscillator all octaves. Uh, so now we'll be modulating the frequency of all three of the oscillators with this lane. And what I'm gonna do here is um, I'll just go into the, like, the last four steps of this uh, 16 uh, sequence here. And I'm going to change the frequency of all the oscillators here. Uh, and so if you use a plus 96 or a minus 96, that's equal to an octave. So let's go ahead and um, put these all up an octave here. All right, 96. Okay, these are all 96. I'm gonna actually, I'll put the very last one at plus 56. Uh, now 56 is a perfect fifth up. Um, the numbers that you probably want to remember are the plus or minus 96 is up an octave or down an octave, uh, plus or minus 56 is up a fifth or down a fifth, and uh, plus or minus 40 would be up a perfect fourth or down a perfect fourth. Uh, so those are the most uh, harmonic intervals, and if you use those, you can generally play up and down the key bed, uh, and it'll still sound harmonically good. As you hear, when we get to the last four steps, it's it's pushing all of the oscillators up one octave and then up one fifth on the last step. I'm gonna just uh, put on a drum here so you can hear it uh, with a drum track.
uh, there, as you can hear, uh, we're getting a lot more interesting motion now. We've got the arpeggiator running with the paraphonic sequencer, so we've got every third note is moving up one octave. These are all still uh, sawtooths, but every third note goes up an octave. And then uh, for every 16 notes, the last four steps are going to go up an octave, up an octave, up an octave, and up a perfect fifth. Um, so here, I'll just, uh, to make the point even further, I'm just going to go in and add a couple more frequency modulations here. Maybe I'll have... Step three, go up an octave. Step four, also up an octave. And maybe uh, let's go in and say step seven and eight also. So step seven will go down a fifth. And step eight will go down a fourth. All right, let's check that out. So yeah, as you can see there, now we've got uh, tons of interesting motion going on. Um, and the great thing about uh, programming the arpeggiator with the mod sequencer like this um, in, in modulation or gated sequence mode um, is that you can create patches that you can truly play anywhere up and down the key bed in any key. Uh, so they're not really like uh, just one trick ponies where you, you're gonna hit down a single note and have a sequence that progresses through its, its sequence of random steps. Uh, but these are these are designed to be able to play anywhere you want on the key bed. And uh, since we're strategically using specific frequencies like an octave or a perfect fifth or a perfect fourth, uh, those are highly harmonic intervals. So um, we can play somewhat complex chords and we're still going to get um, a sequence playing uh, that fits within that key. Um, of course, you have all these other lanes too. You can do different stuff on them. Like I'll often go in and use a... Uh, the cutoff, so track four by default is set to cutoff. Here, I'll just show uh, what we can do here maybe is just come in and switch the cutoff or pull the cutoff way down on a couple of these steps. Like say I want to create sort of a gallop type of sound. I might pull down uh, step six and step 14 here. Let's check that out. So yeah, I hope that gives you uh, just some examples of uh, some of the really cool stuff you can do combining arpeggio, uh, paraphonic mode, and gated sequencer. Of course, you've got all these other lanes too, so you can uh, switch the shape mod on a per step basis um, and really go nuts, uh, create really interesting complex sequences, perhaps uh, some of the lanes you can run where they're not using all 16 steps. Uh, so you get some uh, really complex evolving patterns and sort of polyrhythmics type of stuff 
while still being able to play it up and down the keyboard in any key you want. Um, one of the other things, uh, here I'll just do one more example here of something I will often like to do. So right now we have like 16 notes playing. So I'm um, in phrase uh, B here, uh, I switched it over from A to B. So in phrase B, we don't have any uh, differences here in the tuning. Uh, let's just add a couple on phrase B so it'll still have some interest in the frequency. So I'll make this one similar, go up an octave, up an octave. Uh, maybe this one will go to a perfect fourth and uh, down a fifth, just to make it a little different on phrase B. Minus, minus 56 here. Um, and here on the cutoff lane, I'm just gonna bring down the cutoff on every other step on this. So we're gonna turn these uh, 16 note arpeggiator into more of a uh, eighth note feel. So uh, maybe we'll let it uh, repeat on the last step here. So listen to this. delay here too. I'll just do a beat sync delay. So if you do like a dotted eighth delay using the sort of eighth note feel, you'll get a pattern that's similar to having 16 notes playing. So now with this layer, with the uh, eighth notes, we've got the uh, delay with a dotted eighth uh, delay. So it's creating a sort of similar feel to the dotted sixteenths, but it's actually repeating whatever on step one, three, five, seven, etc. Um, and now when we switch back to between them, uh, this one will have the sixteenth notes with the dotted eighth. This one will be more of the eighth notes. <laughs> All right, so that just sort of gives an example of uh, some of the stuff I've been doing. Uh, I just thought I'd uh, put this out there so uh, it might inspire some other people to play around with the arpeggiator, the paraphonic mode, and the gated sequencer together in tandem. Um, so yeah, I think that'll do it for this video. If you've enjoyed this and want to see uh, more content like this, I've got a bunch of other uh, uh, videos on my channel for the Pro 3, the Prophet Rev 2, and some other synthesizers uh, doing uh, sound design tutorials. Uh, yeah, and just uh, subscribe to this channel and hit the bell if you want to see more like this. All right, everyone. Have a good one.